It's time to talk about quilt shows and show quilts. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the process, how to submit a quilt, how to find out about quilt shows, what I think is special about show quilts, and more. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to go over is how quilt shows work and what you should expect from the process if you do decide to enter a quilt into a show. So when I say quilt show, I'm usually talking about a large national or international juried competition for quilts. There are other quilt shows. There are local quilt shows. There are county fairs, and I enter a lot of those. I think it's a lot of fun, and it's a good way to meet local quilters. And I love the county fair. It's so much campy fun. So I always enter a quilt or a couple there just to support my county fair. But in this video and for these purposes. So when I say quilt show, I'm talking about like a large quilt show that people from all over the country come to. There's usually classes there and there's usually prizes and awards for the winners. So here's the general timeline of a quilt show and your participation and the deadlines that you will need to know about. So let's say a quilt show takes place in February of a year. Like quilt con is always in February, quilt week, Paducah is usually in April, those spring shows. The deadlines to enter your quilts are in the fall of the previous year. So for example, right now it is the beginning of November. The deadline for QuiltCon of next year just closed. The deadline for Quilt Week Branson is in just a couple of days, and that show doesn't take place until next February. So the lead time on entry windows is longer than you think. <laughs> At least it was longer than I thought when I started looking into quilt shows. So why is it so long? There is a entry window that usually you submit some basic information about your quilt as well as some photos. And then the jury takes over. This is an anonymized process. They'll be shown your pictures and some basic information and maybe your artist statement. And then the jurors will decide who gets into the show and who is not in the show. After the jurying process is complete, then notifications will be sent out. This is usually an email. You'll be notified if you get in or if your quilt didn't make it. It's always a big day on social media. Um, especially for shows like QuiltCon that have like a fairly Instagram savvy audience. So people will post the quilts that got in. And then there's also this really fun day that's the QuiltCon rejection quilt show on Instagram. And it's always amazing to see the beautiful, gorgeous quilts that didn't get in the show. So again, if your quilt doesn't get in, it's not a commentary on you as a quilter. <laughs> If your quilt is selected, then there will usually be an attachment or a link to follow to uh, get shipping instructions. There will also be some other requirements in that attachment, like um, a hanging sleeve, uh, label information requirements, as well as if your label needs to be covered for judging, any sort of details like that. But the critical element in there is the mailing deadline. Your quilts now have to travel to the show to be hung and prepared and judged. So there will be a deadline on there. You need to have your quilt in by the deadline. If it isn't in on the deadline, then it won't hang in the show, even though it was straight in. And nobody wants that stress. Once they are all received, they'll be organized into categories. And at some point between that shipping deadline, their receipt, and the start of the quilt show, judging will occur. So all of the quilts for a category will be laid out. The judges will come make their assessment, and award ribbons to the winners of the category. After judging, ribbon notifications are sent out. Now, this might be a surprise. It was a surprise to me. I thought that they didn't announce this at all until the actual award ceremony. But the people who have won an award are emailed about a week to 10 days, give or take, before the quilt show. When I received my ribbon from QuiltCon a couple years ago, I didn't know what ribbon I had received, only that I had received a ribbon. So there will be additional instructions in there, um, where to sit at the award ceremony, and obviously an invitation to the award ceremony, and um, also a lot of legal disclaimers to not share this information with anyone. So I wasn't allowed to tell anybody that I'd won an award, but um, it was awesome news to sit on for a couple weeks until the award ceremony. 
And then finally, at the award ceremony, all of the ribbons are released. Everyone knows who won. And then usually either later that day or the next day, the actual show will begin and everyone will be able to see all of the quilts that were in the show. Finally, after the show, it usually takes a couple weeks until ribbon checks are sent out to the winners. I think I got mine a couple of weeks after the end of QuiltCon in 2019. So now that you know how quilt shows work, how do you find one and enter it? I keep a couple of spreadsheets on my computer of important dates, and I also have a calendar on my website that I use to organize deadlines. Now, this is an accessible calendar. I'll put the link in the description below this video so that you can use it as well. You can even save it and copy it to your own Google Calendar if you would like. But it has all of the deadlines for the shows that I like to enter, as well as the official show dates for those deadlines. <laughs> As far as what you need to enter a show, it's pretty minimal. Obviously, you need a quilt and you need basic information about that quilt. Measurements, um, if there was any inspiration behind the quilt, if you used a pattern, and then you also need to write an artist statement. I have all of this information as well as the photos required of my quilt all in one place on my computer so that if a deadline is coming up and I already have a show quilt done and ready, I can just plug that information into the form and make it really easy for myself. You will also need to decide on the category in which to enter your quilt. And this is going to be absolutely quilt show specific. A quilt show like QuiltCon that focuses on modern quilts will have many different categories that all fit that modern style. Whereas something like a Quilt Week Paducah, which is a little bit more of a traditional based show, may just have one modern quilt category that you may slot into. Some quilt shows break their entries down by size, um, wall quilts, bed quilts, mini quilts, and some have different categories or themes that you might want to enter. So you're really going to have to study that PDF that is released by the quilt show and determine what category your quilt fits into best. So speaking of photos that you will need to take to enter your quilt, most quilt shows require two quilt photos. They want an all over head on shot of your quilt, usually as flat as you can get it. Um, a lot of people hang their quilts. And if you look at Instagram, there's some behind the scenes photography setups that are hilariously amazing and ingenious. I usually take a large white piece of fabric and magnetize it to my garage door and hang my quilts from that piece of fabric. It's really nice indirect light, especially on a cloudy day, and I can get some nice flat head on photos of my quilts. In addition to the wide angle quilt shot, you will also need a detail shot. And this is just zoomed in on a portion of your quilt that shows a special piecing or a nice technique, whatever part of the quilt you think reflects the skill level and the overall feel of your quilt best. You can zoom in on that. And those are the two photos that you need. So there's also a question of what makes a quilt a show quilt or show worthy. And this is going to be different for everyone. Some people want absolute precision and that is what to them makes a show quilt. Other people are looking for their show quilts to demonstrate a new idea, a new construction technique, or an interesting combination of colors, or a new take on a artistic reference. Your show quilt can be absolutely anything. I will say that most shows, especially modern shows, definitely want to see original work. If you make one of my patterns and submit it to a show, a national show, your chances of getting in, I would say, are so-so because they're really looking for your artistic voice. So they're looking for your own original work and ideas. For myself, I like to try something new or challenge myself in some way for a show piece. I usually begin a quilt with the intention of it becoming a show quilt. And so I'm challenging myself with um, extremely precise piecing or incorporating a technique I thought of that I haven't seen anywhere else. Something along those lines. Other people work in a series where they'll take a concept and it could be a piecing idea, a color story, a shape and run with that, making small changes 
to each iteration of that quilt pattern so that there is a running theme through most of their art pieces. I don't tend to work in that way. I always like to try something new. But again, what makes a show quilt for you is absolutely your individual artist perspective. What I consider an art piece, what I consider an art or show quilt is very different than what someone down the street may think. And that is part of what makes entering shows both super exciting and also really scary because you're putting your own art out there for other people to view and judge. So that leads me to the pros and cons and my experiences in entering shows. Entering quilt shows has a lot to go for it. You can get feedback on your work. You can see where you need to um, develop your skills a little bit more and you can see where you're really succeeding. That feedback that you get from both judges as well as showgoers. It's also just a lot of fun, especially if you're going to go to the show that you're entering. It's a lot of fun to meet all of the other quilters and get that camaraderie of entering a show. The downsides are it's really hard to put yourself out there. If it's your art and you're getting judged on it, it can be hard to take that criticism. And it's also hard to take the rejection of not getting into a show. So the last thing I want to add is what happens to my show quilts once their show quilt life has ended. Um, show quilts are usually good for a couple of years. Most show quilts have a um, statement that the quilt has to be finished within the last anywhere from one to four years or so. So as your quilt makes the rounds to shows and ages, it will eventually kind of age out of the system. And um, what do you do with it then? Some quilt shows have the option to put your quilt up for sale on the show and maybe someone will buy it. Um, I've never done that before, but it's super intriguing. So if you have a quilt that is getting a little old for the show quilt circuit, then you could always sell it. Um, I generally make my show quilts to be a decent size, so my show quilts all become family quilts when they're done. So my quilt that hung in my first quilt con and went out to Paducah and was in a couple of their shows is now on my kid's bed. And I love that because I think that that is the ultimate goal for any quilt is to be, um, snuggled with by a family member. But, um, if you make wall hangings and just want to keep them as art, then you can just retire them and enjoy them in your own home instead of sending them out all the time. I really enjoy entering quilts in shows, and I think that ultimately it has made me a better quilter and a better artist. But it is okay if it is not for you. And um, your own quilting path is your own, and you can decide where it leads you. So until we meet again, happy quilting!